Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the fat effects in Logic. Fat effects is a really interesting tool that you can use to thicken up your bass and drum sounds, but can also be applied to other instruments. I'm going to demonstrate this on an acoustic sounding drum kit, and we're going to make it sound much, much dirtier. So to put it up, we just go into our plugins, down to multi effects, and then fat effects. We have several key areas here. Uh, first of all are the effects, so the bandpass, distortion, mod effects, bass enhancer, compressor and filter. We also have three modulation sources of the envelope LFO1 and LFO2. We have an X and Y pad and then a master section which is basically just a limiter. So most of these sections will have a drop down menu, so like in the compressor we have lots of different compressors we can choose from as well as lots of different distortions and so on. Now, as I said in this example, we're just going to try and make this kit sound really dirty, like really gritty and aggressive. So this is what it sounds like normally with this in bypass. So kind of plain, but now we're just going to, well, in fact, we're going to go through and turn everything off to start with, except for the bass enhancer. That's what we'll be starting with. So in the bass enhancer, what we essentially have here is an EQ. We have the tune where we can select what frequency we want to enhance. And then we have the amount, which is essentially how much of a boost you want to give it or how much of a mix of that is going to come through as well as the original signal. So I'm just going to put the mix up or the amount up to 100. And then we're going to move the tune to try and find that sweet spot that we really like. So I'm just going to hit play with it on so we hear the difference. So here it's really, really beefy in the low end now. So now we're just going to move this. So changing the frequency. Quite like it here actually, so I'm going to leave that there. But then we're also just going to drop the amount down a little bit because it's quite loud. So just blend that back. Cool. And now we're going to have a look at the distortions. So turn that on. And as I said, we have lots of different distortions here. We're just going to have a look. We have 11 different ones. We have everything from soft saturation to bit crushers and downsampling. Now for this example, I'm going to use a screen, a square, and then a soft saturation. Now I'm just going to isolate all of these so we can hear them in context. I'll turn the bass enhancer off as well and just listen to them on their own. Okay, so that's a very aggressive distortion. It's quite a crunchy one. And then the saturation is much more subtle, it's just adding in those nice higher harmonics. Now at the bottom here we have the effect order strip, and this is very similar to what we have in our channel strip, in that all the effects and plugins we're putting on will affect each other in order. So in our channel strip it's going from top to bottom, so the compressor will be affecting the EQ, the fat effects will be affecting the compressor and so on, whereas here it's going from left to right, so in this case if I just chuck all these along here, the square will be affecting the scream, and the soft saturation will be affecting the squared, and then so on and so forth. And this does make a huge difference. So I'm just going to put a basic setting on for now for all of these, and then we're going to move them around so you'll hear the difference. And then turn the bass enhancer on as well. We're going to move that around. So it's really important just to play around with what order you have because it makes such a big difference. I think it sounded best just at the end there, so I'm going to leave that there. Next we're going to play around with the envelope and the filter. Now you may not necessarily actually use these when you're making your drum sounds, but I can demonstrate it now and I found quite a nice sound just to make it sound really crisp. So we'll turn both of these on and if you started it or opened up the fat effects from scratch like I have, the target should already be filter cut off. If it's not, you can just click on it and select that. We're going to change the filter up here to 24 high pass 24 dB edgy. So we're going to be allowing all the high frequencies to pass through and we're going to be cutting out all the low end. So the way this filter is working is that when a loud signal comes through, the filter will open up quite a lot and there'll in this case be quite a lot of modulation happening. However, if it's a quieter sound, it'll only open up a little bit. 
so it'll open up a lot with the kicks and the snares and then just a little bit with the hi-hats. Now to change the amount of modulation we want, we can change the depth on the, on the envelope follower. And if you notice this blue line on the cutoff up in the filter, that's kind of the level or limit for our modulation. So if I change the depth, you'll see it start to get smaller. So, you can, so there'll be less modulation happening. I'm going to put this up to about 250. And as you've noticed, I've, you know, this, this maxes out at under 100. However, it will still carry on beyond that. If we, anything above this now is just going to be more modulation on top of that. So I'm just going to put this to about 250. So we have quite a bit. Now, if I hit play, I haven't changed anything. It's going to sound rubbish, but you'll notice this blue, this uh, white dot on the blue line moving. So that'll be the modulation that's occurring. And how fast or how slow it's moving is in relation to the attack and release over here. Now, because we have the high pass on, we're going to change the cutoff. We're going to put this all the way down to about 30 hertz. And this is because we're reducing those low frequencies, but because we also want to boost a lot of that low end in the kick, we don't want to get rid of anything above that really. Just get rid of those super low ends that a lot of speakers and headphones wouldn't even be able to replicate. So it's still going to keep in a lot of our body of the kick. So this is what it sounds like now. Again, it doesn't sound perfect because we're going to actually use a mix of this. We're not going to use all the signal, so the end result will sound much better. Okay, now just to explain the attack and release. You can affect the rate that this modulates by using the attack by how quickly it will come in once the filter has been opened. So when it's a short attack like this, it will come in very, very quickly. However, if it's a longer attack, it will take more time for it to reach its maximum peak. And then for the release, if the release is long, it will take longer to return to the starting point before the filter is open again. And if it's short, then it will happen very quickly. So I'll just, I'll just demonstrate. So we'll start with the release, I'll just put that down. So you can see here, it's going back to its original point very quickly. That's the release acting. And when you see when I increase that, it takes longer to return to its original point. If we have it so long, then nothing's really happening between now and when the filter opens again. So we're just going to draw that down, probably have it about 0.8 or so. And then for the attack. So you can see how it's affecting that there. So with a long attack, we're essentially getting our original source back. And that's because the filter's taking too long to actually come in, so we're hearing it without the filter. But I'm going to have the attack, in fact, I'll probably leave it just about there. Okay, now we're going to change the resonance, and the resonance is somewhat like an EQ again, which will be just in front of or behind the cutoff, so it'll be a small boost affecting that, and it'll sound kind of like a sweeping effect. So if I put it up quite high, because we're in the low end, you'll hear quite a low sweep coming through. You can hear it really obviously there. We don't want that, obviously. We just want a little bit. So I'm just going to put it up to about, about 20. And then we're going to increase the drive as well. You can put a lot of drive in, it's up to you. So you can have it really pushing it. Or you can have it more subtle. I want quite a lot because I want to get that really crisp high end. So I'm going to put it at about 35 in between there and 40. Okay, so now we've got this sound, we're going to try and get a blend between this and the original. So I'm just going to start dropping the mix down. It's going to be quite low, I don't want too much of it. So you can hear the kick start to come back in now. So we've got that full body of that really deep kick, as well as some of that crispness, crispness going on from what we've just created. Okay, so next we're going to add another low end boost to it, and we're going to use the band pass for that. And this is again somewhat like an EQ, where we have the low resonance and the high resonance, where these will be boosts around whatever frequencies we've selected here. So on the left, we have the low resonance or the low boost, and then on the right, the high resonance or the high boost. So at the moment, they're on 20 hertz and 20,000. And it's also going to remove any frequencies that's outside that range as well. So as you can hear then, we're getting rid of it. So we'll leave it about, just drop it down a little bit, so about here. And now for the low, we're just going to boost this up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to 
turn the boost up to about 60 or so because we want quite a lot coming through and we don't want to get rid of too much of the low end so it's kind of matching this actually I quite like it at 50 actually if anything I might change this filter to up to 52 see how that sounds with it That kick is sounding enormous now and lastly on this effect you can add a compressor I wouldn't necessarily even recommend using the one in the fat effects because all of these are just the ones that come in the stock logic uh, compressor so in fact I've already got one open on this channel nothing's happening on it though because the, uh, the thresholds really high but I'd recommend doing it in here instead but I drop it in yeah either before or after the fat effects actually see what works so I'm just going to turn this compressor off because we don't want to add it to everything else that's going on now just touching on what I said before as well is the order down here. So we're going to change this to make it sound even more different, okay? So as it sounds now, kick's nice and beefy, still got some of that crisp high end going on. So at the moment we've got all three distortions on at the front. However, if I put the bass enhancer and the band pass at the front, this is what it sounds like. Sounds a bit ridiculous, right? It just sounds, the kick sounds really squelchy and not what we're after. Now if we put the squared and the scream first and then the bass enhancer and then swap this soft saturation with the bypass around it'll sound a bit better. So we're saturating these, this bass enhancer as well as these two distortions but the band pass isn't being distorted. I know for a fact that the saturation doesn't like the band pass very much so if we swap those around that's where a lot of that squelchiness was coming from so we're just going to swap them back and keep it as is. So this is a setup I wanted to show you. It sounds really crisp, really deep, especially compared to our original drum sound. It's like it's completely different. However, I will still go over the rest of the parameters with you just to demonstrate what they do. So start with the X and the Y pad. If we just turn this X one on, we can select what we want to change or used to change our sound over here. So we just got the low cut off here. And if I move it along the x-axis, you can hear it's cutting out the low end all the way to the right. Then for the y-axis, we've got the high cut off going on. And then same thing, up on the y-axis, it's gonna cut out the high sounds. Now we have a lot of options to go on from here and it can be used to make a really creative sound and it can be really precise because you can make such a good blend between the two. So even just select these two. there's the option to do that. It's really worth playing around with, just seeing what works and linking different things up to see what sounds you can get. We also have the mod effects, which is basically just a chorus. I don't really like using it on my drums, but if used subtly, it'd be quite nice. It's one of those things where it may not sound good on its own, but it'll probably sound quite cool in the mix. And then we have the LFOs at the bottom here, and these can be used to create some really interesting rhythm effects, alongside your drums or even on the bass or whatever instrument it is you want to use this on. So you can select what sound wave you want as well, so just select square, you can select what you want it to affect, so let's just select the low cutoff, what rate you want it to go at, so quarter note, half note, etc, etc. Set it to, set it to a fourth triplet for now, and then the depth to it, so how obvious it'll be, basically. So this is what it'll sound like when it's oscillating the low cutoff. So this can be really cool to create those interesting rhythm effects. However, be careful with the depth because if it's really obvious it'll sound a bit ridiculous, but you can create interesting sounds when combining the two. So get the low cutoff and the high cutoff together and I'll make them at a different rate. So it's worth playing around with that as well. And then lastly, we have the master section, which as I said earlier, is basically a limiter. So you can really push it 
and it won't clip. I'm going to turn these off. So you can make them sound really, really pushy and just absolutely squashed to hell without the clipping nice and easily. The Fat Effects is a really interesting tool that can be used to beef up your drums. There's quite a lot to it, but you don't need to even do too much to it to create such an impact on your kit. So we essentially just use the bandpass distortion and bass enhancer for our main sound, and then we use this filter and the envelope just to give it an extra bit of crispness. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.